In this video, we consider one of the classic algorithms in computer science, the linear search. The linear search can be performed on data in memory, perhaps stored in arrays or lists, and data stored in files as well. The algorithm is very straightforward, starting from the beginning of the data set, each item is checked in turn to see if it's the one being searched for. It doesn't require the data to be in any order, unlike another type of search, the binary search. It will work on any type of storage device and can be efficient for small data sets. However, it's very inefficient for large data sets. If you've watched one of our previous videos on algorithmic thinking, you'd have seen that we used a linear search in that situation. We are trying to find a word in a word search where each letter is stored in a grid. We examined each letter in turn to see if it matched the first letter of the word we were looking for. And if not, we moved on to the next letter and the next and the next until we found a match. This is a classic example of a linear search. It didn't require the letters to be in any order, which is just as well because that's the very nature of a word search. We can apply a linear search to a whole variety of contexts. One might be looking for a particular box of cereal on a shelf in a supermarket. We could go through each box one at a time until they find the one we're looking for. We then take the box to the checkout and the computer will scan the barcode. And then it needs to look up the product description and price in a database of products. It could do this by starting at the first product and comparing the barcode to see if it matches the one in the database. And if not, it could keep checking the next one and the next one until it finds the product or it's not in the list at all. So if we apply some algorithmic thinking, we can uncover the algorithm for this particular search. We could have a Boolean variable called found that sets to false initially because we have to find the item in the list. We could then have a variable i, which is the index of the item we're looking for. We could say, while it's not been found and we're not at the end of the data set, check each item in the list. We could do this with a simple if statement and say, if item i is equal to the item to find, then found is true and we can output the item. And if not, then we increment i by one and keep checking the next item and then the next and then the next until we've reached the end of the list or the item has been found. The specification at GCSE requires you to know the mechanics of an algorithm. You should understand the advantages and disadvantages of using one algorithm over another to solve the same problem. However, at GCSE level, you're not going to be expected to remember the code line for line for a given algorithm. In the rest of this video, we're going to walk through an example of this algorithm step by step. So in Python code, the solution might look something like this. We're storing the data for our products in a two dimensional list so that we can store the description and the price. We've then got a variable called found, which will set to false initially and the index of the item to be zero. We're asking the user what's the product they want to find. And whilst that's not been found, and we haven't reached the end of the data set, we're going to check if the product matches the one we're looking for. And if it does, we're going to print to the screen the price with two decimal places and set found to be true because we don't need to check any other products. This makes the algorithm just a little bit more efficient. If the product was not found, we can increment i by one. We know that algorithms are some of the hardest parts of any computer science specification. So we have written a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science, which is available on Amazon.
While the title of the book suggests this is only for A-level, you can see here from the examination board mapping page that we have chapters which cover every algorithm you're required to know for the GCSE. This book then would be perfectly appropriate for you to use and also to take on to A-level should you choose to carry on studying the subject. Every chapter is presented in the same way. We introduce the algorithm from a high level perspective and provide a link to our videos. We then lay out the algorithm in simple structured English so you can get your head around it. We illustrate the algorithm in the form of a diagram and then provide an example of stepping through it. All of these steps are designed to really get you to understand the algorithm before we present you with pseudocode. After the pseudocode, we present you with actual code written in both Python and Visual Basic, which you could type in and try for yourself.